Hey everyone, welcome back to my kitchen and welcome back to a monthly freezer meal prep. Today we're gonna be doing some odds and ends and some breakfast prep. I'm really excited about some of these recipes. They turned out absolutely amazing. I also wanted to mention that Skillshare is sponsoring today's video, so stay tuned for that. Here after a while, I will tell you a little more about that. So the first thing that I did was make some coconut milk ice cubes and I used these little chocolate molds. I thought that they were a great size to go into some smoothie packs that I make a little later on in the video and I completely forgot to do this but I would have put in some stevia and some vanilla into the coconut milk if I would have remembered but I forgot so I'll just have to throw those into the blender when I make the smoothie packs up. Next I went ahead and put a pound of sausage into the frying pan and kind of chopped it up for one of my egg bakes that I'll be making. And I also cut up some of these little sweet peppers. I love these things and I feel like my daughters eat them a little bit better because the skin isn't quite as tough as a large bell pepper and they're just so tasty and sweet. And um, I just chopped them up really small. So I have been on a major feta kick. If you love feta cheese a lot too, let me know in the comments. But I wanted to make a sausage feta and bell pepper egg bake. I just felt like that combination would be really, really delicious. So that is what I'm prepping all of this stuff for. And like I said, my daughters and I really love these baby peppers. In fact, they will eat these even raw with a little bit of a ranch. I cut up a onion to go in to this as well and I diced it really really fine so it would kind of hide in the egg bake and my daughters couldn't pick them out. Then I pulled off the sausage. I did dump out some of the sausage grease but I left a little bit in the pan just to kind of give the peppers and onions some flavor. All right, so I shared this, I think, in one of my last preps, and some of you were completely shocked and didn't know you could do this. So you can fry a whole pack of bacon in your air fryer. All you have to do is just lay the bacon one way and then switch the directions you're laying it. And all of the grease and splatter is all contained inside of the air fryer. I love making bacon this way, so it's normally how I make it. And then while the bacon was being made, I shredded up some cheddar cheese because the other egg bake, I wanted to make into a bacon and cheddar egg bake and I wanted to top it with some of these green onions so I pulled them out. I feel like I forget about them a lot of the time and then I find a recipe that uses them and then I want to use them on everything. They're just so tasty and make the dish look a little extra special. Then I took a dishes break. I don't film these, but I thought I would insert this in here. I try to do this throughout my prepping so that when I'm done, I don't have a huge mess left at the end. Once the bacon was done, I just went ahead and chopped it up
Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for creators. Explore new skills, deepen existing passions, and get lost in creativity. I have personally been using Skillshare for years and I love the layout of their platform. It's curated specifically for learning, meaning there are no ads and they are always launching new premium classes so you can stay focused and follow wherever your creativity takes you. Also, as a busy mom, another feature I love is every single class is broken into sections so I can watch small sections at a time and come back to it, making it possible for me to complete full classes. Skillshare's entire catalog of classes now offers subtitles in Spanish, French, Portuguese, and Dutch. They have a huge variety of class topics, anything from creative writing to culinary skills, which of course may interest you since you are watching a cooking video. This is the class I'm currently watching. It is indoor gardening and how to grow houseplants, veggies, and herbs. I know that you all will love Skillshare as much as I do. The first 1,000 people to use the link in the description box will get a one month free trial of Skillshare to try out. All right, back to our prepping. So I laid out two large cookie sheets and I sprayed them down and actually I ran out of spray later on. So I had to switch to the paper towel and putting oil in, but that's fine. So then I dumped my toppings in. I don't know if they would be called toppings, but my extras into my egg bakes. So I did the peppers and onions and then the feta cheese and the sausage on one side. And then on the other side, I went ahead and used my shredded cheddar and the bacon bits that I had chopped up. And I don't know about you all, I know I mentioned this a lot, but I love shredding my own cheese. I feel like it melts so much better and it just is so much more tasty. Then it was time to do all of the eggs. And for each of these sheets, I did 24 eggs this time around. I feel like it's just the perfect amount. Sometimes I adjust it a little bit depending on how much filling or toppings I put inside of the egg bake. And this time I did some different things. I added some whole milk and some sour cream. I saw this idea on Pinterest and it did make the eggs a lot fluffier, but of course you may not wanna do that if you are trying to stick with dairy-free. I also put some salt and pepper in as well. And then for the second pan, I just kind of did them separately so I could manage and know exactly how much I was pouring into each pan. So the second pan, I just did the, repeated the same steps. I did 24 eggs, I did a cup of milk and a cup of sour cream with salt and pepper. Also, I did not film it, but it was quite a task to carry those to the oven and get them in without dumping them, which I did manage. <laughs> Okay, so this is something that literally for months I've been wanting to do and I finally came up with the recipe that I felt would work the best and that is to do a strawberry baked oatmeal. In fact, my daughters have been asking for it. We love strawberry and they wanted a strawberry baked oatmeal. So I did find this recipe on Pinterest. However, I did tweak it. I will leave the link below where all the other recipes are, but um, I added in some actual strawberry flavoring. I found it at Walmart I think it calls for two teaspoons of vanilla extract so I did do the vanilla extract and then I also added two teaspoons of strawberry flavoring in fact next time I could even maybe do three it seems to be kind of a light flavor and then the other thing too is there was no sugar that went into this it was just the maple syrup which I felt added even 
more flavor. So it was kind of this strawberry maple deliciousness. I think we all agreed that this was the best baked oatmeal I have ever made. The consistency was excellent. And then I also wanted to bake them up into individual containers. So I used some of my glass containers. Just to make these extra pretty and fun to eat, I decided to slice all of the strawberries and then place them on the tops of each of the mini baked oatmeals. I could have diced them and thrown them in and mixed them around, but again, I just thought it would be prettier this way and that we would have more fun eating them this way. I will try to see if these containers are in stock. I know you guys have sold them out um, just because I use them so often, but they have these pretty green lids and they do work great in the oven. I actually like to make things in these because I don't have a microwave and I use my air fryer a lot. So I love being able to take something out of the freezer and stick it right in the air fryer since it doesn't matter if you put metal or glass into the air fryer. All right, so this recipe, it was kind of inspired by last month whenever I made the protein Kodak cakes, pancake mix, muffins, and I did chocolate chip last month, but I told the girls, you know what, let's do blueberry. And this recipe is actually a little different than the one I had followed last month because it has yogurt in it which I love so it really really amps up the protein and I feel really great about the girls having these for breakfast um, we've done them a couple different ways they are done with a whole grain so I like to add a little something to them so I'll slice them in half you could do butter but we actually have done the cinnamon cream cheese that you can buy at the store super good the girls really love that and then you can also do honey anything you can eat them just plain but just since they are a whole grain I feel like for kids they do a little better if they have some sort of spread on them or something like that. At this point, my egg bakes had cooled down and so I went ahead and cut them into portion sizes and they were not completely cool so I did transfer them to some wax paper and my cooling rack just to get completely cool before I put them into gallons of black bags for the freezer and I do heat these in my air fryer so they're really easy to do in the morning and I don't have to get out all of the things to make omelets. It's basically like having omelets on hand that you can heat up really fast. Okay, so the next thing I did was assemble some smoothie packs. I love having these in the freezer. You can just get them out and dump them right into your blender, add a little bit of almond milk or whatever you want to. So I wanted to do a mango version. I got these frozen cubed mangoes from Walmart. It's just a great price for mangoes to buy them this way. And then I did some banana in with it. I did one banana each. Sometimes I get questions if my bananas turn black doing it this way. I've never had any any issues with that um, but we do eat them up pretty quickly they haven't been in the freezer for like a super long time before we eat them so maybe that's why they're fine and they don't turn black and then I also added in my cubes of the coconut milk
These chocolate molds along with all the things in my kitchen are in my Amazon shop, which I will leave linked below. I know I get questions a lot about why I use black bags or foil and simply just for convenience. You all know that I'm a busy mom and I work from home, I work full time, and so sometimes having things in disposable containers just helps me out a lot. All right, and it started snowing again outside. <laughs> this day was very snowy. So the next thing I made was these cream cheese sausage bites, cream cheese cheddar sausage bites. I can't exactly remember the full name. It'll be in the recipe linked below. But I have to say, these are incredible. I've made different types of sausage bites through the years. I've never made this recipe before, but wow, oh wow so so good they almost remind me a little bit of a, like a biscuit mixture in with the sausage and they actually even have some baking powder I think so it kind of makes them extra fluffy I've never made sausage bites with baking powder in them but these were so yummy and I'm definitely going to be making them again I did double the batch for these sausage bites, so it did make a good amount, and I was happy. I think if I make them again, I probably will make the same amount. Another little suggestion I have for you is divide your food up into the amounts that you need. Like for me, I just felt like it was appropriate that we would get six muffins out of the freezer at a time. Just make your portion sizes to what you need. I have gotten a ton of requests to show you guys how I make freezer meals. So I'm going to try to add them in to my videos here and there. So this is what I made for dinner this same day. I pulled out this lemon pepper chicken from the freezer, which by the way, I did not know that lemons freeze this well, but they look almost exactly the way that they did whenever I put them fresh into the freezer. And this chicken was amazing. I also diced up some potatoes to make like a Southwest potato fry. I did it in my cast iron skillet. And then I also did some green beans with some garlic and butter. It was a really great combination. And that's basically what I do is I pull out my meat because a lot of my prepping I do is my meat or my protein. And then I add in some veggies as sides. The last thing I did was transfer the chicken from the oven into the air fryer just to get the skin a little bit crispy and it worked perfectly. This meal was absolutely delicious and I love freezer meal prep for this reason. You can get dinner out really, really fast. And I want to thank you guys for watching today's video. Subscribe if you're new. Don't forget to check out Skillshare in the description box. Leave me a comment. That always helps me out. Give this video a like and I'll see you guys in my next video.